to DC today. It's Brian Seitel with you here today is Wednesday, the 29th of November. And I hope you all are doing well. Pretty quiet day in markets. The Dow was only up about 13 points. We opened up this morning, maybe 90 points, something like that. Gave it back mid-morning, rallied up about 150 or so, and then just sort of lost momentum into the close. It was interesting that bond market rallied pretty much throughout the entire day. It really was sort of un unchanged. It uh, The 10-year was up eight basis points, closed at 426. And um, you, you know what we've been seeing recently is just as bonds bond yields come down, stocks have been have been rallying. And I think a little of that has just kind of priced in at this point. It's baked in. So, But rates continue to move lower and meaningfully so. And I think part of it was Fed President Waller yesterday was talking about potentially a rate cut in the first quarter. He didn't quite say it like that, but he alluded to, you know, if inflation is down, of course, we would lower you know, rates where they would need to go. And it's not necessarily indicative of a slowdown or a recession. It's, you know, we're, our job is full employment and, and, and steady prices. And so if that's what we've got, we'll lower interest rates, which, which makes sense to me. I mean, um, ultimately, they're restrictive right now. And if we get the numbers that we want, then it would make sense to go more neutral. And so what neutral is, is the question mark. It's most likely somewhere a little north of where inflation would be. So if inflation is two and a half or three, then maybe Fed funds would end up gravitating towards that that range, which I think it ultimately will. It's about timing at this point. But um, there was a, a revision of Q3 GDP. Um, maybe it was later morning, and it was significantly better. Uh, they revised it up from 4.9 to 5.3 annualized on real GDP uh, quarter over quarter. And a lot of it was consumer strength. And actually, I thought when that number came out, you were going to see more of a, uh, a pullback in, in uh, bond prices, meaning a rise in bond yields, just because growth is coming in hotter than expected or better than expected. And so you'd think of, of higher rates, not necessarily lower rates. But that didn't happen. And again, I think it was part of Waller's comments yesterday. And then we had the release of the beige book from the November meeting out of the Fed today that um, spoke to just cooling economic conditions in most of the districts, not all of them, uh, lower inflation numbers, employment picture that was coming off a little bit. So it was kind of what the Fed and what the market, frankly, wanted to see on the day. So you had some support with rates is the point. Um, I did have a comment in there on just valuations. The um, If you took out the seven biggest tech companies, um, which has been coined the magnificent seven somewhere in media, but if you take those companies and you probably know what they all are, the ones that sold off the most last year and the ones that have rallied the most this year, if you took the market cap of that and just made it made it its own sec made it its own sector uh, in the MSCI World Index, it would be around eighteen point two percent of the whole world index. The market cap of it. it's huge. If you think about that, it would only make up about ten percent, roughly, of the earnings of the MSCI World Index of all companies. Um, and to put that, in, and again, this is seven companies. To put that in perspective. If you took something like the entire financial sector in MSCI World, it would equate to less. It, you know, the market cap would be around fifteen percent of it, but the earnings amount that that would fifteen percent would generate would be almost twenty-two percent. So you're basically the point is you're you're getting a, a much lower market cap size of companies, much diverse, more diverse number of them, and about double the earnings. So the point that I'm making is just valuations of some of these big tech names following this year's run up and last year's sell off are pretty lofty and if they're expecting you know rates to go back to zero they're likely not going to do that barring something really catastrophic and so if you end up getting a fed funds to sort of normalize in the threes you know or the fours even you know um call it three and a half something like that I don't know that a 60x or a 70x multiple is really warranted, even for some of these great companies. So but it's just a point of the starting point on valuation really matters. We don't want to start in the year 2000 with tech. We want to start in the year 2002. So all that to say, again, market was pretty benign today. We have some numbers out tomorrow that I think will be more meaningful, um, particularly with inflation. There's a PCE number coming out. There's a jobless number coming out, and I think pending home sales. So We've got some some good stuff in the in the mix for you tomorrow. I'll actually be back with you tomorrow. I know David's traveling up north, San Francisco, with some meetings and things. So I'll be back with you uh, tomorrow. I appreciate it. I did a little tribute to uh, our uh, um, 
uh, to, to Charlie Munger, who was uh, Warren Buffett's right hand man for for you know decades and decades and decades, and vice chair of of, uh, of their company, um, just because he's got such great way of looking at things that was straightforward and just you know no frills, no thrills, and just great sage advice. And so I put a couple of quotes in there that I thought you might find fun. I do. I like them. So with that, RIP Charlie Munger. I wish y'all a wonderful evening, and uh, please reach out with questions. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.